Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode of Garage Noise, we're going to talk about body filler and how to straighten a dent using body filler. We're going to, we've got this Chrysler 300 here. It's got a dent right on this body line, a little crease right here. I'm going to show you exactly how I repair this and how you can do it at home. So let's get started. So if you're doing this repair at home, the first thing we need to do is to get that dent out. Now you can do that a couple different ways. One of the ways is you could get behind it and pry it out with some kind of tool like a paintless dent tool here or some kind of pry bar. The other way you could remove this dent is you could drill a hole and use one of these hook tools to slide it in there and pull the dent out. And then you want to knock the ridge down around it. Most people have a drill at home and these tools are relatively inexpensive. I will leave a link in the description. So if you're trying to pull a dent out of high strength steel, one of these little hooks is probably not going to work. In that case, you would need a slide hammer such as this. This has a screw on the end. You would drill a hole, screw it in, and then you can slide hammer or pull the dent out. This will take out a lot deeper dent that's in the high strength steel area. So today we're going to be using a G90E spot puller. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grind it to down to bare metal. We're going to weld onto the center of that dent and pull it out as we knock down the crown around it. When a dent is created, it, it raises the metal around it, creating a crown. We need to knock that down to get it back into shape. Okay, so now I'm gonna grind the damaged area down to bare metal, make sh making sure that I'm getting in all the low areas removing all that paint so I can tack well to it. Now, if you're doing this at home, it's probably in your best interest to keep this grinding as small as possible. Now you need to grind the dent so you can pull it out, but you don't need to get a big, huge area because you wanna keep this repair as small as possible so you don't have to blend into adjacent panels. Okay, so I'm gonna start right on this body line. Weld, it, weld the tip there and pull right on that body line. And then we're gonna to go to this low area and this low area. We're gonna use the G90E spot puller. So you attach the ground to some bare metal and then you use the slide hammer. It welds the tip on the low part of the dent and then you can pull it or slide hammer it out. So we'll just attach this right here. Okay, now we're going to go just above it, make sure that's connected good. Now, while I'm pulling this, I'm going to tap down this ridge right here. That'll allow that metal to release inside that dent. Okay, now I continue working this dent, pulling out all the lower areas in this dent until it's removed. Now we have this dent all pulled out. It's pretty much straight, but there's a few little rough areas. So now that this, all, this dent is all pulled out, ready for filler, we need to grind this off again and clean up these little welding areas where we use the spot welder. And then we'll check it for any low or high areas that we need to tap down. Okay, so now that we have this metal all straight, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the orbital sander with some 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna sand just a little bit around this area, smooth out this edge in case any body filler gets up over this edge. Now this body filler we're using is designed to go over bare metal, aluminum, and it will go over the paint. It's the Roberlo. Maxi fill, I believe it is, but we'll check it out here in a minute. So let's do that, get this taped up and put some filler in it. Now, if you're doing this repair at home, you wanna keep your repair as small as possible, the body filler, the primer, and that type of thing. 
Um, you don't want to have to blend into another panel. I don't want to have to get too much color up here because I want it to still match the hood. Now we are blending into this bumper, so that's really not a concern, but you want to keep it as small and as tight as possible. Okay, so let's mix up some body filler. Now, there are a lot of different brands of body filler, thousands of different brands of body filler, and they're all used for different purpose. They have different qualities. Um, this is Roberto Max Fill Plus. This is a really good mid-grade body filler. It's mid-grade as far as the performance and as far as the cost. It's not a real expensive body filler, um, depending on what your idea of expensive is. I think it runs about $46 for a gallon. Uh, which you can go up to $60, $70 a gallon if you choose. But Roberto makes a really good product. We tested out the R1 body filler, which is their budget body filler, in the last video, and it works phenomenally. So I'm really excited to test this out and see how smooth it is. This is the step up from that, I believe, or maybe two steps up. But it's not going to take very much. And this is a really smooth body filler that sands very easy. In fact, they... They recommend you start sanding with 120 grit sandpaper. I think we're gonna use 180, but it's probably, it seems to me it's like a step up from a glaze. We're not gonna need a lot of this. I'm just gonna put about that much on there. We're gonna get a skim coat on it and then see how it sands and see if we need to put another coat on it. So we just put a little bit on there. You're supposed to mix it up 2% of this and you know, you can weigh it out or you can just go by I and usually 2%, that's about, that's probably just a little bit more than 2%, but that's okay. It's just going to harden a little quicker. So you have a, a certain amount of work time with this filler, with any filler, and depending on the temperature, if it's a hotter day, your filler is going to harden up a lot quicker. So just be aware of that when you're using it. Now, as far as using the filler, mixing the filler, you just want to fold it in. What I like to do is fold it in. You want to get it all one uniform color. Make sure it's all mixed in really well. And you're trying not to put any air pockets in it. So you're trying to keep the air out of, out of filler. That will cause pinholes when you're sanding. Now, you know, different quality fillers, they may produce more pinholes than other, other fillers. And then right off the bat, I can tell this filler is very smooth and it's going to spread very nicely and that's really the difference between a really good filler and something that's not so good and that's cheap it's going to be really rough or chunky or coarse it's not going to be a smooth filler where this product is very smooth all right, it's all mixed in now. Let's go ahead and lay it in the panel. Okay, set my filler right there. I'm gonna go ahead and just tape up this edge and this edge, because I don't wanna get any filler down over that edge. I wanna protect everything around it so we don't have to do some extra sanding and extra cleanup. Okay, now we're ready to lay it in. What we're gonna do first is what we call a tight coat where we press it in. You wanna press it in firmly. Oh, and look how smooth that is. Oh yeah. So I did that section right there. Now I'm gonna come down and I'm kinda of doing up to that body line and I wanna kinda of create that body line with the filler. And this, this body filler is smooth, let me tell you. So now I'm, now I'm pressing a little lighter. I'm not, uh, I don't need to press it as hard because the body filler is in the dents and dings. And you don't have to be perfect about it because you're going to sand most of this off anyway. Try and get it as smooth and as perfect as you can, but just know that you're going to sand it. I can tell just from experience, this is a, a quality filler being how smooth it is. Let's see how it sands. 
Okay, so normally I would use the vacuum system, the block with the vacuum on it, but I want you guys to see how well this sand. So I'm gonna start with 180. It calls for 120, but we're gonna see what it does with 180. And I'm gonna block it and we'll see how easy it sands. But, so after you, straight, after you laid the body filler in here, you want to knock down the rough edges, start shaping it. Now we're, we're blocking with contours of the body, okay? We're going to do it in an X pattern that helps get it, get it straight. But I'm not going to block right on this ridge because I want that body line to remain there. So we'll block flat on this section here and then we'll block with the contours here. Now this is a, a pretty firm block. It doesn't have a lot of flex, a little bit, see? and it can, it, we should be able to shape it around there. So let's block this and, and give it a shot. So you can see there's a little low area here. It's right where that dent was that I was saying that remained. But this is starting to feel really good and it's sanding really well. So I'm gonna continue blocking, but I'm starting to go through here. You can see there's metal there and it's getting a little discolored there like there's metal there. Once I hit metal here, I'm gonna to have to put a little bit more filler in this low area, okay? Because once you hit metal, you're not, now you're not blocking the body filler anymore. You're, block, you're trying to block metal and you'll never get it straight. So. You want to stop, add a little filler, and then continue on. Okay, now you could use a guide coat on this and that will help you find the high and low areas. Um, but you can kind of tell the discoloration here where it's a, a little yellower and this is lighter, a little darker, and this is lighter. So you can tell the low spots there. There's a little, a little chippy thing there where it didn't get filled. So we're going to continue blocking. I'm going to put on my dust mask and let's get this sanded out. Okay, so now we're going to mix up just a little bit more filler. I'm going to put a thin coat over the whole thing, but I'm going to leave a, a little extra right in here. So we're going to do a tight pass on this. And I'm going to loosen it up a little bit and allow that body filter to sit in that, that little dent, that little low spot right there, okay? If I press too hard, I'm going to push it all out of the low area, and I don't want to do that. I want to leave it in that low area so I can block it straight. Now that we got a little high spot here, so I'm just going to put a skim coat over this area right here. Okay, and that's it. We're going to block that out, see what we have, let it dry. Okay, so now we have this all sanded. That low spot is gone. All I did was block it with the 180. I've got this nice body line here, and I did, I did round it just a little bit to shape it like the factory, okay? Now, we can do some more of that once we get primer on here. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over it with 320. I'm gonna do a little bit of blocking with the 320, but I'm also gonna go around the edges here where there's 180 grit scratches and machine sand those out with an orbital sander and the 320 grit sandpaper. So we'll smooth that out and then we'll do a little blocking with the 320. Now you can do this all by hand if you choose. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. Let's machine sand this out.
Okay, so that's really all it takes with the DA, just a quick machine sand, those uh, 180 grit scratches out, those coarse scratches, so we can primer over it. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of block and shape this body line a little bit with the 320, and then we'll get ready to prime it. Okay, this is ready for primer. Well, we're gonna mask it off over to the scratches. Now those are 320, so we're gonna go over this again with 600 before we paint it. But for now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape up to the scratches and I'm probably gonna, what I'll do is I'll take my DA and I'll go around this perimeter with 600 grit. So if a little primer blows over onto that, it's not gonna create an issue and we'll be able to sand it out real easy. So we'll tape this up and we'll put some primer on this. We'll go over with the 600. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just clean it. I'm gonna use some wax and grease remover in this little bottle here, spray it on here. And then we're just gonna wipe it down, remove all that dust, any, any wax <coughs> or road grind, and then we'll tape this up and get it ready to put on some 2K primer. And then here I'm just gonna tape it up and then roll this over so it'll leave a soft edge. So a little bit of primer will might go underneath it. We can sand it off. Roll it back so it leaves a soft edge. Let's mix up some Roberlo M1 and spray a little primer on this. Okay, so I have a little bit of the M1 primer mixed up in this AccuSpray, this 3M AccuSpray gun. If you haven't seen the review and demo on this gun, check it out, it'll be at the end of this video. We're gonna go ahead and spray this on there. And remember, we have a little bit of bare metal showing here, but that's not a problem because this is a direct to metal primer, this M1. So typically, you're gonna have to you're gonna to have to use a special primer over metal, but this primer is designed to go directly over metal and we're gonna use it today. Now I have the volume, I have the pattern turned pretty tight. I went closed and then I backed it off one turn because I'm not gonna put a ton, I don't wanna use a ton of air pressure on this because I wanna keep it nice and tight. So we're gonna have about 20 PSI of pressure. Test out the pattern, I'm gonna turn it down even a little bit more. So there's the size of my pattern. And now we're just gonna put one coat on and then we'll let it flash and put another coat on. Now this gun is interesting because it comes with more than one tip, different size tips. This is a 1.4 tip, but they have a 1.8, 2.0, 1.3 for base coat and painting. 
This is the 1.4, and it's just, you snap it off, clean it, really easy to clean, and then you dispose. This is the PPS uh, cup system, which you dispose of the liner and the lid on this after you're done. So it's a really easy cleanup. Okay, so now this dent is gone. We've got it, went ahead and primed it with two coats of primer. All that's left is it for, for it to be block sanded and prepped out for paint. And if you wanna learn more about paint and body repair, check out my growing library of videos down in the description below. And if you wanna build your skill and increase your knowledge, start now, subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you don't miss anything. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.